Okay, so we're now recording. And again, just to recap, uh, we are taking attendance each and every week. So the expectation is that you will be here uh, visiting with us and uh, taking part in everything that's happening. Uh, we're trying to make it as much like our lab if you were in class with us. So the format will be very similar in that we'll discuss our expectations. Um, we'll show the a video of what we're doing uh, and we've also broken down that video so the demonstration that we would have shown after the video to sort of give you some helpful tips tips pardon me um, will be illustrated here as well uh, and then our time together online will not be the four hours I don't expect I don't Stefani and I don't expect it to be that long but that also gives us the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with you outside of uh, this format to help you if, if you needed that. So just any uh, housekeeping things that I want to share with you. Uh, we've used this, you've probably seen this slide already, but just to do it again. Uh, I know you've been in Zoom, but uh, so the way that we can make it work is, first of all, because we all have things going on, I have a puppy here as well, so hopefully he will not bark when somebody comes to my door. Um, but I'll ask that you mute your mic so that we don't get a whole bunch of background noise. It's your option of, as to whether or not you want to have your video shown um, so we can see your face. You, it's not a requirement for sure because we see your name and everything in there. And that in order to keep it easier, Stefania will be watching the chat box for us as she's been doing and answering questions. Um, so if something happens or in this discussion that you have a question about, feel free to stop us. This is going to be very much like the classroom environment. So if you have a question, use that indicator in the, question, in the chat box that you have a question. You can either A, just say, I have a question, and then we'll, we'll ask for the question. You can turn on your mic and ask it, or you can type it out, and then uh, Stefania or I will read out the question so everybody has the benefit, and then we'll provide that response. Is there any questions right now? We're good. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, we'll turn off the mic. Um, if you have the question, then you'll post it either by saying you have a question or you'll, uh, you'll type it out. So I just want to sort of see how everybody is doing. So I'm going to do a little poll with, with you. So you should be prompted right now to take part in the poll. Can everybody see it? about 10 more seconds for everybody to have a, an opportunity to get in and have their thoughts and then I'll share it with you so you can sort of see what how everybody's feeling. All right, so if we look at our poll results and the first question was, you know, this is our first week. Uh, I just wanted to take a, a virtual pulse. This is something Stefan and I have talked a lot about and we want to know like, what are your thoughts and feelings? And so nicely, 70% of you have, you're stated that you're feeling good. Uh, and then 3% all the way down to the last question, 3% are feeling that their heart is beating faster than a rabbit's because they're so anxious or nervous about what's going on and hopefully over this week, as you see how each teacher is, is going to facilitate your classes, um, that'll ease some of that anxiety. I think really between Stefania and I, you'll see that you're, you're not going to miss out on uh, too much. Obviously, we've had to adjust 
some of the course learning requirements because tools just aren't available to you. So using extensions and stuff like that, it's just not available to you to integrate into your updos. And it's not something that we expect you to go out and purchase. By all means, you can, but it's not in expectations. Uh, when it comes to tools, I know that uh, the majority of you actually responded to our request on that. Um, so in having all your tools, 9% say, nope, I don't have them. 39% say, you sort of have bits and pieces of it. And 52% of yeah, you're ready to go. So that's good to know. Um, and that you still have some questions about going on. 67% of you feel comfortable. I guess that we've made it clear through our updated CSIs and announcements. So that's really good. Um, 9% of you still have some questions, so we'll, we'll provide an opportunity to uh, address that today. And hopefully we'll calm that down, at, at least with style hair, and uh, so that we're able to concentrate and move on on that. The poll is gone now, right? I'm just going to take it that that's a yes with the science. So really, um, we would love to have, you know, you've addressed that you have some questions. So maybe let's take this time to figure out what those questions are so that we can uh, get those answered before we go um, anymore. It's still on. Yes, yeah, the thing is still on your screen. Just press close. There's an X at the top yeah. or the bottom, wherever. Mine was at the top. Okay. Stop share. Yeah, you can't just do the X because that's what I did. I actually had to stop the sharing. It's gone now. Yeah. Good. So is there any questions that you guys want to bring up? You can turn on your mics if you like, if we do it sort of orderly, or you can type it in the group chat. Um, and, and we can, between Stephanie and I, we can try and help you out on that. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay, so um, I was kind of wondering, like, what's the, like, due date kind of thing? And what's the situation with that? Not that I'm, like, trying not to get things done. It's just this no. is like really stressful in general as a situation. Yeah, no, I like, um, yeah, I've been quarantining at uh, my boyfriend's house and I guess we're both in like at risk groups. Okay. And then I've gotten my parents to bring me a bunch of stuff from home, but they're both like older and smokers. So they're also kind of at risk and it's like, oh yeah, I don't know. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's Megan speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so there's two things that are going to happen and, and you'll be able to see what the expectation is every week. So the assignment due dates are going to remain the same as they would if we were in class. So your due dates are always Monday at midnight next week. So today we have class, you'll have the week to complete that. Um, and then you have two, two options and you pick one of them. So for those who uh, said in the poll, hey, I'm ready to continue practicing. I have everything. Let's get at it. Um, the updo that we'll be showing today, as well as uh, your own creation. So there'll be two updos. Uh, you'll just have to do those updos, take the pictures. You will not have to do the head mapping. And I'm going to talk about this again later. And, and Stefania will probably jump in and help me out with that too. Um, or if you don't have your tools, what we've done is we've created an assignment that would show us your knowledge by doing a step-by-step -step outline as to what that is, as well as doing some research on um, an additional thing. So we'll go through that assignment before the end of today. But so for those of you who don't have your tools, you're in quarantine, good job, remaining safe, love it. We want that to happen because we want to be together again uh, in a safe manner and, and not have any casualties, if you will. And that's a bad pun, but really, that's really, we do not want that. Um, that's why we've tried to create options so it's still worth the same waiting. Um, it's just, it's, it's providing us a different format. Really what Stefania and I have tried to do is mimic the red seal. So how, if you were going to write your red seal today, what would be some of the expectations? And the expectation would be that you are um, able to describe. And a lot of the test questions that they have on there are describing 
hairstyling, haircutting, coloring questions. So I don't think we are too far removed by having you do that in this format. Does that answer your question? Yep, yep, definitely answers that, thank you. Perfect, and then- uh, Tara, yep. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is this more to do with what you were just talking about? Mm -hmm. She has an important question on the side when- Okay. You have a stack. So uh, the one that I see now is how are hours going to work if we aren't actually in a lab setting? I understand school hours are fine, but I mean for an apprentice sake, also if you have any insight on how our tuition might change, I would like to hear about that as well because there, there's a large portion of money we pay that goes to our labs and occupying that space. So there's there going to be money deducted. So that's a multifaceted question and I'll try to answer as much as I can. So um, hours uh, in school, so not necessarily just hours online, but hours in school, uh, we are a mandated program, obviously in a regulated trade. Uh, we, as a public institution, we're governed by our Board of Governors, we have the option to deliver the program how we see fit. So technically, the college could, it would not be a smart move, um, but they could actually have this entire program online. I don't think anybody would register for this program if it was always online. Um, but because of the work that we're having you do, and as well as these online face-to-face um, -face meetings, if you will, or synchronous meetings, uh, we can actually track how many hours an assignment would take um, and those type of things. So we've been very strategic in that. So you will not lose your hours as long as you are, you know, again, being present, submitting your work, then that will be easy for us to uh, sort of track and, and bring back the hours and say, you've met the requirements, especially you guys in your final semester. There are a few courses I'm, I'm going to admit because we were tasked with that job on Friday, Saturday morning last week is to identify which ones could we definitely not meet um, the learning requirements of that course. And there were a few that we identified that would not happen. I'm not sure in a level four, uh, I'll be honest, I was sort of in my own little silo of my own courses and there was one course that I identified that this was not one of them, um, that I identified that no, I, I, it would be impossible for me to meet all the learning requirements in an online format because the student's skill set at that point. Um, so that will have to be made up in future semesters with you guys being graduating and that was just something that Altec was talking about as well is whether or not the semester, they're still deciding that if the semester will be extended. I apologize, my phone's going off. Um, I sort of need it on. Um, that uh, whether the semester will be extended for those classes that need face-to-face, -face, um, but you will not be penalized in any, we're working closely with the ministry so that they know. Uh, in, insight on your tuition, I, I would probably, and I don't wanna be that person who says, and I'm the law and this is what it is, um, I would, suggest that there will not be any type of refund on your tuition because the college is still providing you with your learning. The, the, the facility has changed for sure that you're working from home, but that could be definitely a question that you could bring to your student reps and those student reps on your behalf could go to the chair and the dean. Um, I know for the residents, they were asking students to leave if they could return. We know we have international students that they just couldn't leave. They had to stay in residence. They had no other place to go. The people who were able to leave, basically they were, you know, saying leave if you can. They were giving them money back, but tuition, I, I, I don't know. I, I would say that that's probably not going to be likely, but you know what? No harm in asking, right? But that would have to come from you guys. And I would, like I said, go through your student reps and, and be organized in that, may, in that way. Um, large portion of the money we pay goes to our labs. So it's labs and theory classes. Um, but I'll tell you from doing online classes through Algonquin College, it's actually more expensive to do an online class than it is to do a class face-to-face -face, uh, because of the technology and the programs like Zoom right now that they have to have. So um, that, that would be another thing. I don't know if that answers your question and, and probably not the answers maybe you wanted to hear. 
you could text, absolutely, you could send an email to Altaf uh, about those concerns. And I'm sure it's not the first email he would have had from that. Again, I would, I would suggest, I know you guys are all in a group, maybe a Facebook group or something, is to bring those concerns. So instead of having 50 different emails come in, I would have a list of those concerns that you guys have. You, you guys are very um, articulate. So list the concerns and then have your student reps send that email jointly to the chair so that he can bring it um, to the deans and the president's council. You said our program could be extended. So are we not done on the 17th? Again, they're looking at if um, we can meet all the course learning requirements. If we can't meet all the course learning requirements, I apologize, in an online format, Jack, uh, in an online format, then, uh, then th they have to sort of look at how can we do it in a face-to-face. -face. Right now, again, I just want to remind you, right now, all the literature that has come out from the president is that uh, classes may return at as early as April 6th. We don't, we haven't been given a hard no on that yet. And we have been planned to, uh, to develop up for online up until April 6th. And then we work from there. I thought we were told that our program was fine. Our program is fine. Yeah, a puppy. <laughs> he's a full grown dog, but he just gets excited because he's part poodle. Uh, for semester hair, I mean, yeah. And, and I believe one, because you guys have, if you look at the way our program is laddered. Our, our course learning requirements repeat themselves. It's not necessarily a new course learning requirement each and every semester. Sometimes they're more challenging. We, we've built in uh, different ways of making it harder for you so that you can increase in your level of skill. But I, I believe for the most part, the level fours uh, will have met the course learning requirements and we can develop, we can evaluate the rest through online. Um, public schools won't be returning to school in the sixth, as announced yesterday. Probably not. Yeah. So Probably not. again, we we go hour by hour. Typically, we're getting announcements like you daily from the president and from our chairs. Uh, will there be a grad ceremony because we're expected to be in this situation a few months? Again, that is a great question, um, and not one that I have an answer for. That that has popped up a few times in the different meetings that Stefani and I have been in, and we don't know that. So typically grad happens in June. So like convocation when you're walking across stage, I think that's what we're speaking of. So convocation happens in June. If all the grades are in and restrictions have been lifted, it's because that's uh, crowd gathering, right? Then I don't see why they couldn't uh, because we're a far ways away from that. Uh, the grad party that you guys would normally arrange and have, that would be maybe a different situation. Have I missed questions, Stefania? No, we're just speculating. Someone says that it's um, that there has to be three straight weeks of no, no one testing for the virus before isolation ends, but it's really up to the government. Yeah. And then just suggesting a Zoom graduation ceremony. Yeah, that would be fun. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the way uh, the testing works, I can speak from a, a personal thing. So I was actually tested um, for the COVID-19 virus and I can also tell you I'm still awaiting results it's been more than eight days after my second testing because the first one did not work out um, and so what would have happened so say I would have got results that I was a positive um, having the COVID virus which I don't know if I am I don't think I am because I feel fantastic um, they would continue to call me every day and, and check on my results when I stopped showing my results, so say it was a week later, a week from that point where I'm not showing any symptoms, they come out and retest me again. Um, and then if that test comes back good, a week later from that, they retest me again. So anybody who's been tested, and if you test positive, you're getting at least two more tests. So that's where your weeks come in. Um, so it's not just uh, that people are stopped being tested just first time. It's it's the end testing that you're cleared. So that's where those weeks, if you're hearing that, that's most likely where those weeks are coming into play. Uh, you don't have any symptoms, unfortunately. You could just be carrying. You're absolutely right. You, you don't have to be having the symptoms to be, a, a, but they're not testing anybody who's not showing the symptoms. Uh, and, and they're really restricting that now. Is there any other questions in related to 
care style um, or uh, the program itself that I, we can help you with. Um, me? Yep. So for the Abdu aspect of it, um, I know, would we have to take like a before and after pick or like a process pick to show how we got there or just the after pick? Uh, so I'll be going through the criteria for that. And I believe if I remember correctly, it's just the after pick. Uh, a demonstration skill that was due last night, week 11. Um, so we did not have that, and I'll go through the changes that happened in our um, course outline. So the week 11 demonstration of skill, we did not have classes week 11 because of the suspension of classes. Uh, so that has been eliminated and uh, we have adjusted the percentages uh, accordingly. So you don't have that one. The week 10 is maybe what, what you're referring to. That was due last Friday. I extended the date. I believe Stefania did as well because we were both talking about it. So we extended that and I know myself, I just finished uh, marking that today and it was awesome and I was sad that I missed all that. Um, is my long brunette fine to use? Absolutely. Um, as long as you know you can perform the tasks and you want to do it, and, and I would encourage you, both Stefania and I would encourage you to continue to practice. You're all of the level of skills, especially from what I've seen on my section, it's fantastic, and I would hate for that to slow down in times where you can't be in the salon working and you can't be in the lab practicing. So let's um, do all that. Can we burn all our blonde men? We're, we're going to have a. It would be very smelly and terrible for the ozone, but hell of a fun if we could. <laughs> burning our mannequins. Um, apparently though, De Deanna has saw something where uh, for the blonde mannequins, if you crush up, she wants to try it when she gets back. And I said, well, I have a blonde mannequin. I don't have any aspirin. Apparently though, if you crush up three aspirins and you mix it in with your shampoo, it makes your mannequin all nice again. I don't know if that's good, but I'll tell you, I have a big fire pit at home. We, we can just come if, if, if the thing is off. Um, impossible they are doomed <laughs> and i've seen many of them they are doomed any other questions that stefania or i could help you with to just sort of solidify some of those nerves and get rid of them you just got a new mannequin and her hair keeps falling out a new blonde one Interesting. So that was replaced from the bookstore or you purchased it on your own, the new mannequin? It got changed from last semester. Hmm. Well, we know when they're brand new that they do lose some hair. So I would just watch it. And, and if it continues to be like that, when this is all lifted, get another new one. Complain again. Have it so that you can practice and... Uh, do great things. You're starting to get bald spots. And be careful too. Remember you guys, when you're washing your mannequins at home, if you are washing them, don't be scrubbing, cold water. I used to, I had a student who was washing her mannequin in the shower with her and I thought that was hilarious, creepy and hilarious all at the same time. But uh, like really just let the water run down on it and only, I would honestly only condition it. I wouldn't even be shampooing them right down the middle part. That's not good. I keep scaring my dad with them. Yeah. They're all over my basement right now. So I'm scaring my kids. All right. So if we have no more questions, and again, more might pop up and uh, Stefania and I will try and watch that chat window or, or be able to help you as we go through today's presentation. So I'm just going to bring back and really our, our motto, I feel, uh, as, as we're working through these challenging times is we're going to do what we can with what we have where we are. So, you know, some of you may have more tools and equipment than others. Um, some of you may have more access to different things. Uh, we're just going to try and work our best with what we have. And that's why Stefania and I are giving you two different submission options each week uh, to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get the fantastic grades that you're used to achieving each and every uh, week. So I actually have a video and what I've 
what we've done, Stefania and I, is uh, while this is embedded in our PowerPoint, we've also submitted these videos separately. So you can choose to come back and watch this whole presentation or just watch the videos. And I know uh, some of you have already started on this, so fantastic. So we'll just watch this video really, really quick and then uh, we'll talk about it. Hi, my friends. First of all, here's a great, great technique for an updo or upstyle for the holiday. Oh, that wasn't very good. Sorry about that. First, what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to start with a real simple rectangle section. So we've taken it right from the recession area all the way back and then around the crown area to square it back up. So the back view looks like this. Front view, recession area. Top view, fold along top of the parietal ridge, and then just bring it up and square it off. Once you have that, now we're going to subdivide this. Watch how we're going to do it. Start first with a triangle section. Then I want you to take that triangle section, isolate that into a ponytail, and let that fall into a ponytail. Once you've done that, then I want you to come back to the top of your rectangle section. You're going to subdivide that in half. So you subdivide it in half. Then once you've done that, then I want you to come in and do it vertically. So you go in and you go vertical and you go vertical. Then you're going to take this vertical. You're going to divide that into two ponytails. So I'm going to put a ponytail on the left side of that, a ponytail on the right side of that. Once we come to the back, here's the right ponytail. And this would be the left side ponytail. Then you're going to take the back area that you have. We're going to make a ponytail there into that back area. Here's a top view of it. Then we're going to come through in the center. We're going to take a triangle from the center to the lobe of the ear. Center to the lobe of the ear. Come up to the top of that and you isolate that. Then I want you to come down and isolate a ponytail down below, just simply dividing that. You have a total of six ponytails. That's that triangle section and there's your ponytail. Now, let's take a look at what we've done. Here's the triangle section. And this is that triangle section that represents the ponytail we isolated there. I'll talk to you about all the little elastics we placed inside of each ponytail. Here's that rectangle section divided down vertically, left side, right side. Here's the back of the crown area, one ponytail. Then when we go to the back area, you start to see how that's the top of that back area. Here's that triangle underneath, six ponytails. Now, once you've done that, then I want you to start to measure approximately two to three thumb, thumbs, <laughs> three thumbs, just fold them and measure. Mix it up, three to two. Do that all over. So you end up with all of your ponytails looking like this. In the back area, we took that one ponytail, we divided it into two. Took the bottom ponytail and divided that into two. Once you've done that, that's what takes the majority of the time, is pre-setting your ponytails in and your sections. Now watch what's going to happen. Once you've done this, take a small piece of hair from the end. Then all I want you to do is go to your elastic and push. Go to your elastic and push. Go to your elastic and push. Now work your way back out. Work your way. And just start to create these little bumbles. Some people say, Sam, that looks like a Chinese lantern. Okay, so we come through. Hold on to that. Push, 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 and just rouge that. Okay, and do this all the way to all of your bubbles. I'm going to work with each section. Maybe work a couple sections at one time. And look how we pre-textured this with the texture iron. So if you take a look at the texture, you can see it's got this little crimping effect that goes through it. That's built with the texture iron. I love doing this technique with the texture iron because what it does is it gives it a much plumper, fatter feel to it. Now, once you've done this, now it's just a matter of starting to create and starting to pin. So now I just start to push and pen. So let's say we might like that position. See it and pen it. You're going to use a simple hairpin. Yeah, look what Sam's done to the hairpin. We simply went through and we bent one foot of the pin. And the reason then, if I keep this just straight like hairpins are made, when you place it in, it slides out during the evening. Take one foot, bend it maybe a quarter inch up. And now when you slide your pin in, 
it's not, if, if it slides out, it's going to catch on the other foot. It's not going to fall out. So come in and start to manipulate and see where you want this to sit. Like I've actually made bows out of this sometimes. And now watch. Straight foot goes to the elastic and then just slide in. And because of the way we bent the pin, it's not going to go anywhere. So just slide in. And now take my other one and just start to build the silhouette that you want to build. See, I just move them around. I just move them around. I'm going to create a little bit more of a mohawk kind of feel out of this one. So just move and just place. Now, you might say, well, Sam, I'm not sure my client would wear it like that. My friends, you're missing the point here. Okay, what I want you to do is grasp the method of this in terms of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And then what I want you to do is you create the silhouette you want to create. So, for example, you might just do a simple ponytail that's gathered all the way in the back. Just gather all the hair and put a ponytail back here. Imagine taking that one ponytail and divide it into a numerous amount of ponytails. Put your little elastics. Can you imagine just the bubbles sitting very low in the bottom nape area? So there's many ways that you can position this. I wanted to just push my envelope a little bit and create a little bit more of a kind of a feeling that has a little bit more mohawk kind of a feel to it. And now you just simply continue to grab and pin wherever you see you want to place your bubbles. That's all you're doing. Now watch. Let's go to the back. So let's take a look at the profile view of this as you work with it. Okay, we come to the back. Once again, watch how I can work from the inside, work in, and literally grab just one little piece of hair towards the end. That's going to allow the bubble to push in. Okay, so we go there, and rouge, and now just fold and start to place in the way you want it. Like I'm going to come back in and maybe just push that right in there. So you can just start to see how you can create things. One of the easiest things to remember is updos, a lot of people tend to fear up styles. There is no feel, especially with working with the texture iron. What I love about the texture iron is the idea the texture iron is what's giving me a very, very... Oh. Sorry, I keep... <laughs> I'm going to jump. I'll stop him from here. Because uh, I was trying to check the chats and every time I click on my screen, I'm affecting the video. Um, so really, when we look at this video, uh, this video that we're asking for this week, um, I do have uh, a breakdown of this video to make it hopefully easier for you to watch. Um, so instead of having the ends pop out everywhere, um, well, I'm going to jump up a little bit. Stefania has been great at uh, answering some of the chats on there. So I was going to say put product in before you make the ponytail. Yeah, put product in and, and you can see, like, what happens if you do not have product? Pardon me? What happens if you do not own, like, product that you would normally use in an updo? Yeah, so this updo, actually, you don't really need a lot of product. So I, the one that I did at home, I just literally braided it, and, and I have that other video that we can watch and uh, see. But I just did little micro braids because I don't have a mini crimper at home in order to get it. You could get the same results by just curling the hair in, in small curls. I did find that um, I, I needed to maybe go over my my uh, braids a little bit more with the flat iron in order to get more crimping done to the hair. I know that your mannequins are challenging in that the condition of them. So I didn't want to do it. the other one is we could have did the figure eight around the hairpin as well, right? The reason why we selected this style though is because it's more editorial. So it's not really that polished, clean look that we normally do. Those ends sort of you can see how he uh, tees the ends with his hands to create that sort of rough appearance. And, but you can easily tuck in those ends to not have it so fluffy. And as he goes through the video, which I would encourage you to continue watching again when you go home, or sorry, when you go home, when you're at home and off this thing, um, is he actually uses a chamois on the sides to sort of pull out and make uh, the hair a little messy looking. So it's not so perfect. Um, so don't worry about, uh, the product so much per se. I even when I went into the school and grabbed some things, I grabbed very limited things because I, I recognize that a lot of us are not going to have different things. The elastic showing, great point, and I address it in my video as well that I can show you. Um, ideally, you want to use the elastics that are either same color as the hair or clear um, in order to 
camouflage them, uh, you don't have to worry. We are not going to be deducting you grades for seeing elastics because the idea of this updo is you would see some of that. Uh, some people would even purchase if, if you were doing this for competition hair, um, which is more of a that, that's our whole theme for the rest of the semester is fantasy and competition hair. You'll see that uh, stylists would use those little clamps over the elastics to sort of have that jewelry effect going in and around. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna go to the next slide if it will allow me. So here, I just wanted to break down a few things. So this is in my basement and uh, don't laugh too hard at the video, um, but just some of the things that he has done in it uh, so at home, the rainbow elastics are fine. And, and I'm going to talk to you about that in this video. Hi, everyone. We're uh, just breaking down the video from the SEO level. Uh, and the theme of well, working with what we have, you can see I have prepared my mannequin by doing small braids. The braids are off base. So we can't hear it that well, Tara. You're going to have to turn up the speaker on your um, device. Oh, I can't, I can't respond to chats while videos are going. Hi everyone. We're uh, just breaking down. Don't worry. I'm replying to the chats. Perfect. So if you're having difficulty hearing it, I'll just sort of speak over it and hopefully it's not too confusing. So I braided the hair, not too small of braids because I wanted to be able to work with the hair. I could have went smaller, uh, realizing that later, but I think it maybe if I would have pressed it more with the flat iron, it would have been good. But you can see the texture I was able to get. I literally braided this one day, flat iron, and then I left it. And then the next day I went back to the hair. The key point in this is that you don't want your braids to be sticking out from the head. You want your braids to be at that bottom part of the section so that when you bring the hair back, you're not contending with all kinds of small little crazy sections. And it is to create texture and volume in the bubbles. That's why we're presetting the hair. So six sections, but eight ponytails is what I'm identifying if you can't hear in my video. This would be like a heavy then fringe area. That square or rectangle shaped section at the top of the head and created two ponytails. So that's the two that I'm referring to there. And then the remaining part from that rectangle section is there. So in reference to my So for me, I found that that was easily explained. I found the back area here a little confusing. That's why I wanted to outline this.
your hair comes right from the side to that, then leaving the knee as its own. And these two back ponytails, so the one and the two, are actually then subdivided into two more ponytails. And I apologize uh, for the video sometimes being close. Hopefully you're able to get the idea. I just wanted to slow it down for you from that video because I know I did have to take a little bit of Kara, yeah. And for those that the mannequins don't have that much hair, which a lot of them, what can we suggest? So they'll just have less bubbles. It just won't be as big. Like even my mannequin, you'll see when I start to get into it, I don't get the form as big as what he had because the mannequin is not as long as what his was. So it's really just getting that technique, even, you know, your brown hair mannequin. So now creating the bubbles the way he has done it. Again, if you want extra volume, you can go in and back home before you secure it uh, in the elastic, the individual elastics. But basically, all you're doing is now taking the hair and starting and holding it from the tips, just like a small, small section, and encouraging those elastics down the hair. Now, I did find when I was sort of doing a practice run of this, that I had to take the hair and almost expand it myself and then push down those elastics to create the bubble. So feel free to work it and create as much volume as expanded as you feel necessary in order to create that finished or desired volume. Another tip, which I'll note again, is you could be back combing those individual ponytails before you put the elastics in too, and that will help really expand those forms. And I didn't have product in my mannequin. Um, I was trying to sort of replicate what you would have available to you at home as well. So product would help keep those bubbles formed out a little bit as well. Another trick is I found when I did it, my ponytails, those little pieces, I found I did them too close. So it limited how big I could actually make my bubbles, where I probably had them spaced out between two, maybe two inches. Uh, I would recommend try to go a little bit bigger if you can, and you'll get those bigger sizes. And really the placement of that is you're really going to allow the hair to direct you as to how you're maintaining. I, I played around with this. In fact, after I did this video, I took it apart and was playing around a little bit more. So these are, you know, everybody's like we do in class. Everybody's will be slightly different. So we want to be, you know, expecting that creativity. This design is, is creates a faux hawk texture. So my next one, I would go in, expand the form, bring it out, and I'm going to continue to do that all the way down the center of the head, building this, building height, building volume, manipulating these sections as I need them to be manipulated. Uh, because I go out a little bit wider here, I can have a little bit and then it can come in more conical. I could build these in more to have it more of a true faux hawk style. That's going to be totally up to you in your final product in your design. Okay, let's just. Sorry, it's just. 
freezing up on me for a second here. Um, so when we look at that uh, example, again, as I was mentioning, as we were talking through, and I, I apologize, I'll try to speak louder uh, if we do future videos so that it's easier for you to hear. But again, some of the examples are, um, is that have the elastics a little bit further apart. So for myself going through it, I would probably have those elastics a little bit further apart if I wanted to have really exaggerated bubbles. It's e it, you could easily do it as close as I was as well. I know we're limited in some of the, the length that we have to our mannequins. Also, if you want to have those really exaggerated, because I found sometimes when I was pushing the elastics down, my bubbles were sort of folding in half. That's why I was forcing to expand them out, where I think if I would have back home, even just slightly, it doesn't have to be a big rat's nest, but if I would have back homed it a little bit more, because I, don't, I didn't have the option of having that uh, mini crimper, I probably would have got a lot more expansion out and definitely you're going to allow that hair to sort of guide you how it falls where you're placing it be creative with it have some fun uh, the idea definitely is to get volume and not to have that sort of wedding hair that we've been working on prior to our mental health break uh, but to get more of um, that fantasy that competition hair that that project that you guys did for us where you're looking at what are those requirements and it's, it definitely is not that everyday look. Is there any questions about either one of those videos, uh, either the Sam Vila or the one, I apologize again that you couldn't hear me very well. Um, and we'll, we'll try to adjust that as we move forward. It was my first YouTube video. Are we good? All right, and I know a few of you, uh, I know Amtul showed me her sectioning. So really it's just getting down to those sections and you can uh, definitely manipulate that a little bit more. And you may maybe have less ponytails or have more ponytails uh, depending on what's going on. So therefore uh, what Stefania and I are expecting you to do this week. And, and I'm, I might, before I go into this, I'm going to stop this share for a moment because I do want to go into um, our Brightspace account. Great question, Niall. When would this update assignment be due? The answer is, oh, Monday. Monday at midnight, just like the rest of our assignments. Everything's going to carry on exactly the way we've been doing it. So if we go into, uh, so your CSI has been updated. Stefania and I have updated your CSI because there was some questions about how things are going. Obviously my dogs need their nails cut because I hear them uh, chomping around. So if you look at the CSI uh, in the Brightspace shell, it can just again address some of those earlier questions that we had. Everybody sees, right? The CSI right now? Yes. Good. Okay, so don't get dizzy, as I normally say. We'll just sort of scroll down. Um, and through here. Uh, so we've changed what we would have done with you in class, as we've mentioned, some of the work that we would have done with extensions and hair additions, uh, we've pulled out. And we've, we've selected updos that we feel are going to challenge you, but also aren't going to be overly taxing on you to do on your own if you're choosing to do it this method. So the demonstration of skills still remain at 6% each and every week. And again, uh, we will go through what that means uh, depending on how you're doing it. The change in grades is going to be week 14 where you would have had a demonstration of skill that week. Uh, we've dedicated week 14. You, you would have done part of this in lab with us and then submitted the rest to us online. Um, but you're going to actually do a research plan. And really this research plan is going to be 
almost an inspiration board. So it will be outlining, you know, what is your theme for your final submission? Um, what, it, what would it look like? Where are you drawing your inspiration from? Coloring, um, ornamentation, everything, and, and how you're actually uh, planning to make the hair look. Uh, so that's going to be worth 12% and, and there will be a, a rubric associated with that. We apologize. We are not at that point yet. We have it in our minds, what it's going to look like, um, but we'll have the rubric to you shortly so that you can begin that planning stage. Um, and then the last week, we're fingers crossed, we're back in lab, but if we're not, then ideally, maybe some of the, the lifting will have happened where if you don't have your mannequin, maybe you can do it on a person at home um, or, or you'll do it on your mannequin. So ideally, uh, by final assessment week, hopefully, uh, everybody will have tools and stuff because we're a few weeks away from that. If not, if we're not able to actually do that because of still having restrictions in place, then uh, as we've mentioned, we've planned up until the week of April 6th. So week 14 and week 15 uh, are still subject to change, but our, our plan is hopefully to have you do that final up to. If we can't, then Stefania and I will go back to the drawing board as to what that final assessment would look like. And I know there was some questions happening in the chat. Stefania, are you are you on that? Is there yeah. anything I need to Yeah, add? no, that was it. We're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. Any questions that we should be stating out so that it's recorded so people have it or no, it was just when is this due? That was it. Okay, perfect. Um, so if you go into your week 12, so you can see uh, not all your weeks are open to you as of yet because as we're making changes what what was originally in there had has now been scrapped so we've closed it down just to make sure that we're not confusing anybody and we're making it available to you as we have it beautifully prepared um, so for your week 12 you'll see the videos uh, the powerpoint presentation that we used through this discussion is there for you so you don't necessarily have to go back and watch the whole thing um, the the sambila bubble video it, you can just watch that if you feel it's good um, and then if you have any, any further questions, possibly um, that other video that, oh, maybe I haven't posted it yet, I will today for my group, um, that shortcut or Cole's cliff notes that I created in uh, YouTube, uh, I'll make that available to you within the week 12. I apologize that it's not there already. Um, but you have both to sort of support you and definitely you can reach out to us and uh, we can meet with you individually in this format or by phone, whatever works for you. Uh, if you're having questions about how to do that task, if that's the task that you're going to do. If you do not have your tools, if you're in a location, you don't have a model, you don't have all that stuff, then you would do this alternate assignment. Now it, it's important to note that, um, both of them so no matter which one that you're going to do you're still going to submit it through week 12 demonstration of skill so whether you're doing the written report that we're asking or you're actually doing the updos you're going to submit them through here so uh, again you're not only doing the bubbles updo if you're doing the updo you are, you are actually going to design your own personalized fantasy or competition hair so you're going to do two updos one is the bubbles, one is a creation of your choice, as long as it doesn't look like a wedding or prom hair. Uh, we want something fun and allow you to have a good time with that. Um, so you'll submit those two photos. You just do not need to do the head maps that you've been doing all term. If you're unable to do that, then you're going to do this assignment. And uh, so the, the details for this assignment You open it up, um, there we go, is you are going to actually give us a step-by-step -step description. So we're going to be looking at your use of anatomy. So I tried to sort of, when I was doing my video, like being very concise and where the partings were. Um, so you're parting, you know, from the parietal ridge or back to the um, apex of the head, the nape, you're using those type of terms. Uh, you're, you're talking about how the hair is prepared. So you're going into it and being very clear uh, for updo and you can see there's the grading rubric for it uh, and providing the citation. So it's a Sanvila video, so you'll be using that. And then you're actually gonna research. So you're actually going to find another updo. 
So whether it's a video, whether it's a photo, totally up to you. And then you are going to do the same thing for that second updo. So you're, again, this would be an all written assignment. This would not be you performing the task. And then for the updo number two, that you're sort of saying, here's, here's the updo. So it's not like, oh, I would do this updo. You're actually showing us a picture and you're breaking that down. So you're either showing us a picture or you're providing us a link to a video. Um, of, and there's all kinds of videos out there for fantasy and competition hair, and as well as images that you can break down on your own. These ones, uh, you will be using illustration. So it's going to be similar to your head mapping. So you're going to use a very descriptive wording. It, it can be bullet point. It doesn't have to be in paragraph format. Um, but you're also doing those drawings. So you're mapping out much like I did when I was trying to copy that video. You have the mapping out of, as to where components are positioned and how they're created. So I see lots of uh, chatter happening in the chat box. Yeah, can you please read Tyza's question? Uh, if we're not going back, then it's online. Yeah, so that, that was something that we addressed. If, if we're not going back and it's online for the final, is that what you're asking? What was the question? Go back. Will college be extended? Yeah, if we're not going back, uh, it will be online or you guys don't know yet. So, can you clarify your question? For, me? for the last two weeks, right? Because uh, you, we are only off for this next two weeks. So it'll be April, last two weeks of April yep. from our program. Yep. So you guys don't know the exactly answer about it. If we are doing online our final or if you're extending after to finish face to face. So then it will be online. If, if we cannot get back together face to face, um, then so the week 14 is easily achieved online because you're doing research so whether that would have happened in lab and, and we would have supported you and and that so we could have face-to-face -face meetings we can do all kinds of things the the thing that is unclear for stefania and i right now is that week 15 if if we have this weighting of this final practical assessment um, but we're not in classes and not everybody has a model or has a mannequin um, how do we adapt that? So we're going to go week by week until we're given direction that we're definitely not coming back. So until we know that, then uh, Stefania and I will, once we know for sure, then Stefania and I will have to revisit how we're going to do that final assessment. Right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry I can't answer that, but this is, you know, this is a precedent for us. Um, we, we have never stopped classes or halted classes this way so uh, we're, we're really trying to make the best of what we can and, and I appreciate that you guys are you know you're all here and online with us today and uh, you have very sound and, and great questions is there anything else we missed Stefania that no I don't think so okay is there any questions about this alternate assignment oh for my my class um... I'm just going to add, as soon as this meeting's over, I'm adding the link to directly to the Sambia video into your course content. I don't think it's there. So give me a couple minutes after the meeting to put it there. I think we had access to it, Stefania. I think, oh, or maybe not. Sorry, I Googled you it. Access, right. You have access to it indirectly mm -hmm. in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but not a direct link. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll just try and keep it as easy for you guys to get a hold of information as possible. And again, another thing that I always want you to consider is Stefania and I, you know, we're, we're available outside of class. Exactly. That if you need us to be, it's, it'd be easy for us to watch you do what you're doing. You know, like you could have your computer, your phone, and you're showing us something and we could say, well, here's where the challenge is, or here's something, you know, I, I have my mannequins at home. I know Stefania has access to stuff too. So it's, it's easy for us to, to do that. And, and I say it's easy 
but it, it really is when we sort of take down some of these barriers that uh, we're not used to this format, but I know I have helped people remotely, even by taking over their computer screen to show them things. So I know that it's possible to do what we're doing. Um, we just have to be willing and able to do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back then to my week 12. I'm gonna close this off. So you have those two things. Uh, again, our, our content probably looks very similar. So expectations, it's going to give you, can you grab that one so he's not barking, sorry. Tara, your 27,000 emails are giving me anxiety. <laughs> With my 27,000 emails? Up top. <laughs> your unread emails. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Oh, someone's asking, do we have an option to do the updo or the assignment? Yes, it's one or the other. You do not need to do both. Yeah. The alternate assignment is for people that do not have their tools at home. If you got your tools, you should be doing the updo. It's more fun. Yeah. That's really how, how Stefania and I have created this assignment is it should take, it will probably take you the same amount of time as doing the updos. So the two different updos that you have to do. Um, so, so we have an option to do the updo or the assignment. Yeah, so you're, you're gonna do one or the other, not both. There's no bonus for doing both. You're just going to submit either or in the week 12 um, demonstration of skill because you're still demonstrating your skill. So whether you're writing out those step-by-step um, clear directions. So we should be able, Stefania and I should be able to read that and be able to follow your directions in order to recreate the updo without having we, to the video. Sorry, go ahead. Are we required to use product? No, the answer is no, it's not required. Right? Yep. And you're going to see the both updos that we've selected don't really require any, up, any product. If you prepare your mannequin properly, you won't need product. Product will just hold the hair longer, but you know you just need to have it long enough to take a picture of it. And then if it falls out, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to see it. Any other questions? We're good. So can I ask, I'm just going to go back here. Oh, I need to stop sharing that. Um, we're here while I see many of your faces before I do this screen share again. Um, how are we feeling so far? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, I like that. Some people have found the uh, icons as well. Good. So, and I don't know if you know this, um, when you're doing the chat, there's also the option to raise your hand as well. But I think it's working out today really well by just typing in and between Stefania and I. Thank you, Stefania, for being an amazing support today. Um, I, I think in this format, by having both of us here, it's, it's, it's enabling us to really support you best. I'm told, did you finish that up too as you were uh, watching everything? Good for you. Um, so I just want to just go back to this really quick. Um, so again, we, we want to make sure that or is, is the big or it's not both it's option one that you're doing both today's updo that was shown as well as creating so you need to submit two updos um, and you just need to submit your photos you uh, you don't need to submit like the prep of the hair it, it's just the finished result or you're doing the final you're doing the alternate assignment which is the written one and i think you need to do do all of them no, you don't need to do Zoom. Is that what is being asked? Uh, uh, the hair updo. We have to do two or only one? Two. You're going to do two updos. So the Samvila bubbles, you're going to do okay. the, your interpretation of that. Ideally, it's close to. Um, and then you'll do an, an additional updo. Your choice, as long as it, it meets fantasy or competition requirements. And your last assignment that you did for us um, you know those outlines because you, you research different competitions 
um, that are available to you. And okay. I have to say from marking all mine, and Stefania had the pleasure of seeing everybody's up dues that day. And that was a very exciting conversation between her and I. Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah. Okay, now Tara, just to clarify. Yes. The written exam, the written assignment has two updos that they're doing. Yep. The hands-on assignment is one updo. Two. Two updos. Okay, where did I miss that here? So the hands-on, so they're just going to research. So the hands-on one? Yeah, is the bubbles. So they're doing the bubbles. And then? As well as one of their choice. Okay, you guys all got that? I was just trying to answer the questions in the box there. Yep. So there's two updos for everybody. Yep. Right? Okay. So Tara, uh, uh, which question should, uh, should I uh, need to the answer the, the activity? I, I still, I don't get because uh, my, my mark, you give me the, I don't know how much. I just get very low marks, so. Because you, you I did a bow, I did a bow. So. Because uh, you should have, I put notes in everybody's marks where I marked it. And if you were missing a component, so that assignment you're talking about week 10, um, you needed to create, you needed to submit the competition questions. So you researched two competitions. And oh. you those seven questions for each of those competitions, as well as your picture from your updo as well okay. as the head mapping. So if you missed any of those in your submission, then you would have lost marks because it was based on that. Oh, yes. That's a, this way I have to answer that one, the same. I have to answer again the, this time. No, it's not for this assignment. No, there's there's no questions for that. Yeah, okay. we've already done that. It's okay. close. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I want to know the thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I'll put in the notes. If, if I deducted marks from anybody, there was in the notes besides your thing. And I see Clarissa there. Clarissa, I couldn't open your images. Can you please resend them? And the JPEG, I sent you an email about that. Um, so if you could just resend them so I can give you grades, that would be fantastic. Um, any other questions or things? Yeah, one sec. So would you want our name shown on the mannequin or us in the picture or something like that just to prove that it's them? I, 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 we trust you. And, and the reality is if we see an updo that's exactly the same from somebody else, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to flag it. So, and uh, it has happened and I've flagged things before and, and if they are exactly the same and uh, I flag it and you get a zero. So just make sure it's yours. And, and, and all our mannequins have our names on them anyways now. So I mean, or there's something that I know it's yours. So let's, let's do good honor system. Continue to do good honor system. I didn't get I haven't added, just so you guys know, uh, Tiza is asking, I haven't added the marks yet for week 10 for your uh, competition. So so that's my section. That's because we're still separate in shells. We're just bringing you together. So as we work through, and I literally just finished marking an hour ago. So yeah, we're a bit I'm, behind. I'm I'm not that right. much ahead of Stefania. <laughs> I'm yeah. all behind. Yeah. I just I just have a question. I think the last time I checked, there there was the there was an availability for submission for week eleven and not knowing that the dates have been changed. So I just submitted the, the assignments for week 11. Yeah, I noticed you put something in there. There's nothing, there was nothing due in week 11, so. Okay, so my submission will just disappear or? <laughs> it's still there, just, yeah. it was not gonna count for anything. I don't know, did okay. you work on your own and do whatever was there? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I saw yeah. the date and panicked and then I proceeded. I know. Week 11 was considered totally cancelled for the whole school. Um, there was and no... the marks from week 11 went into the week 14, right? So that we could still have that 100%, if you will, at the end. We just made the week 14 assignment a little bit more challenging than it would have been. Okay. Yep. Um, can you check my grade? Can I check? Um, Great, yeah, what are you checking for? Yeah, because I see here, yeah, you gave me, um, the week 10 activity, you gave me a seven and a seven, the object three over three, and the head map two over two. But at the end, you gave me five over six. 
I don't know where I went wrong. Okay, then I'll check that when we get offline. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. No, it's not. It's my pleasure. Okay. Any other questions or things that we can help you with? I'm good. You're good. Good. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Um, so the way Stefania and I have designed this is our lab would have been four hours if we were together. So if we look at how a lab would have taken place, uh, we would have done a, hey, how's it going? This is what we're doing. We would have shown you a video. We would have demonstrated that um, thing. And then we would have given you time to go work on things. So now would be the time that you would be given to go work on it again you're going to manage your time responsibly and be awesome students as you are. Um, but if you do not need us anymore, then uh, we can end the chat and allow you that time. Remember your due dates and we will put an announcement in and I apologize for sending you 50 million emails to my section uh, because we did change the time because we, uh, we started when Stefania's group would have started in order to keep it instead of starting that half hour later. But every week now, uh, we will start at one o'clock for all of us and we'll do a similar format. If you would like to see something more, feel free to email myself or Stefania. However, uh, better that we can support you in this format. If you have some ideas and thoughts, we are definitely open to it. We are obviously redeveloping everything right now in order to make it um, good. We're good? You can show us your dog. You wanna see my dog? Jack. Yeah. This is Miles, everybody. Jack. Oh, no. Hold on. He's not loving this. Oh, kitty. <laughs> yeah, so cute. He's bad, so we have to get a diaper when I can't pay attention. Because he will pee. My God, your dog is so cute. That's a cute dog. Oh, oh my God, that kitty. But the groomer is closed right now, so I may be doing a, you know, Stefania was teaching people how to cut their own hair. Maybe I have to do a, a demo on how to cut a dog. <laughs> Give him some balayage. Yeah. I will tell you a funny story. When he was a puppy, his hair was black at the tips then brown and then gray and i thought i have to have him because he is a balayage dog and then he had his first haircut and he went all gray oh well what kind of dog is he he's a multi poo so maltese and poodle but he loves to bark because he's terrible so i have to get him he has to go outside or something the next time we do this together so thank you for being patient is there any other questions Yes, Tara, please uh, consider my grades also for week 10 because okay. the week 10 activity, I got all full, yeah. but in, in out of 12, I got 10. So just check. Okay. Okay, please. Oh, and Emanuela. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other thing before I, if we're good? with uh, if it's just more of uh, like questions about checking assignments. Okay, then I'm going to stop the recording. And we can continue having a chat, whatever you need support, but I'll stop the recording so it doesn't uh, go forever. <laughs>